Hi guys, how are you? Crafting with Sam here. Today is going to be a look and chat. Uh, well, that and Joe's and Shane's, whatever you want to call it. I need my sheets, please. Today is going to be a true crime story time. Yeah, um, I've been watching a lot of court TV lately and I felt like, oh, I can do, like, a review on that. I think that would be a good idea, right? To give you, like, a... dark out today because it's raining Shit. sorry I had to blow my nose okay anyways Let's get started. So I was watching this court case, um, quite a bit of it, and it's just everything that he had said was just lie, 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 lie. Um, I figured that he would be charged. So yeah. Um. Anyway, so let's get started. <laughs> Okay, um, Palm Coast, Florida, court TV, after deliberating, uh, for two hours and 15 minutes, the jury had, had found Keith jo Johnson guilty of first degree murder of, uh, of his wife, Brandy, um, Colenzia. Um, upon hearing the verdict, the victim's family members burst into tears after a quick but emotional victim impact. Um, statement from Selena's sister, uh, the judge sentenced Johnson to life in prison without the possibility of parole. I saw only a little bit of that. I just, uh, I don't know what I was doing, but I heard that he did found him guilty of first degree. So, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty brutal um, okay, so I thought it would just be an interesting one to share. Um, A Florida man is facing life in pr prison for allegedly killing his wife while his six-year-old son was at home on the morning of April 7, 2018. 36-year-old Keith Johnson died 911 to report Brandy missing. Or, no, sorry, not missing, sorry. Talenzia had been shot. Uh, and he had told police that he had heard gunshots while in the shower. Yeah, no, that's not exactly what happened. <laughs> he was just a really big fat liar. And even when he testified, too, he lied. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Colenzio was struck by two 9mm bullets on... Uh, sorry, in one 
in the center of her chest below her right breast and Johnson told the police he, be he believed his wife accidentally shot herself. Police believed Kalanzia death was neither accidental or nor suicide. Following an autopsy performed on April 9th, the medical examiner concluded that her death was a homicide. I mean, yeah, come on now. Okay. Three weeks later, uh, Johnson was arrested and charged with second-degree mur murder, but when uh, investigators discovered surveillance video from inside the home showing the couple arguing in the days leading up to the shooting, the charge was upgraded to first-degree murder. Okay, Johnson had um, himself wired with, with the home, sorry, yeah. Johnson himself had wired the home with an elevated multiple camera setup, looked in and out of the house, including the camera in the master bedroom footage on from April 5th to two days before. Valencia's death, uh, this fix, the couple violently was arguing for hours according to the arrest report. Cameras also captured John Johnson making the 911 call at the point where he told the 911 operator that he was checking Valencia uh, for injuries. He could clearly been seen hiding in evidence of uh, narrow uh, tits I'm guessing which means drugs or whatever you know that's what that's what I'm that, that's what I'm I'm assuming it means When the dispatcher instructed Johnson to apply pressure to Clemzia's wounds, um, he did not apply pressure because there's too much stuff surrounding Clemzia. Uh, That's how it's C E L E N C A. He also told the operator that he couldn't see the gunshots wounds and he because he just got out of the shower and he just did not want to risk slipping on the floor and possibly hurting uh, Clemzia or causing the gun to go off. It is believed that to any footage of the actual shooting was neither erased or removed. Johnson is now 39 and has been held at Flagler County Jail without bond since his arrest. So, yeah, liar right there. I mean, if it was your wife or spouse, wouldn't you want to help save them and not let them bleed out? <sighs> yeah, big dummy.
Okay. Santa Fe, um, NM, uh, light act from, sorry, AP, a light from an afternoon sun slanted through the tall windows of the Oh, okay, that's the next uh, cold case. Okay. <laughs> Oops, I don't want to, like, read. Or, uh, you know what? Yeah, no, I'll do two. Okay. Light from an afternoon slanted through the tall windows of the weathered wooden church, a uh, catching of the plank floorboards, and illuminated the stained glass outside of the arid ground northern New Mexico foot stretched a miles uh, a p miles a picture setting from an old west battle the actor Alec Baldwin um, hadgered in a white beard and period garb as he played a wounded character named Harlan Rest sat in a pew working out how he can draw a long barreled Colt uh, .5 revolver across his body and aim it toward the movie camera. A crew raided the shot after adjusting um, to the account for the shadows. The camera wasn't rolling yet, but the director, Joel Souza, S O U C A, Peered over the shoulder um, of a semi uh, tober, uh, uh, graffer, graffer. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. By the way, this was that shooting that went on in that movie set, in case everyone, anyone didn't figure it out yet. That happened, like, recently. So, that's the one that I decided to tell about, because it's going around right now. Um, okay. Um, over, Zuza peered over the shoulder of the semi totographer Helena Hutchins to see what it saw. Suddenly, Hutchins was complaining about her stomach, uh, grabbing her midsection and stumbling. <clears throat> Backward, um, saying that she couldn't feel her legs, S Susa saw that she was blooded and that she was, he was bleeding too. The head from the ball and gun pierced Hutchinson's and rumbled in his shoulder. Um, a medic began trying to save Hutchinson's people streamed out of the building and called 911. Lightning of special search uh, 70 said that um, her held, that he held her while she, as she was dying. For blood on his hands, responders flew Hutchinson's in a helicopter to no avail. After the October 20th uh, shooting on the set of the movie Rest, accounts and images were released in court documents and in interviews and social media's postings uh, have portrayed much of what happened. And during the tragedy, um, but they have yet to answer the key question: How, with ammunition wound up in a hail gun, of being used as a movie prop, despite pre precautions, sorry pre precautions that it would have prevented it. 
so if you've been listening into this case, it is very sad. Of course, he's in shock because he didn't know, like, he didn't know it was a real gun. Mm. Like, he had absolutely no idea what was going on. And it was just, this whole thing was just so sad that it had happened. During the news conference on Wednesday, Santa Fe can County Sheriff Aden Mendoza, Mendoza said that there is some uncompensity in how weapons were handled on set and that there is about 500 rounds of ammunition of mixed blanks, dummy rounds, of what appeared to be live rounds, even though set from the firearm specialist. Um, Norma, Hannah, I'm just going to say Hannah G. Reed, um, said that, uh, that should, there should have never been a real ammo presence. Obviously, I think the industry has record of recently of being safe. Mendoza said, I think that there is some a cum policy on this site and I think that there are some safety issues that need to be addressed by the industry and possibility by the state of New Mexico. Mike um, Tredsito, a veteran movie weapons specialist, called it appalling. Appealing? A-P-P-A-L-L-I-N-G. That lies rounds were mixed with with the blanks and dummy rounds. In over 600 films and TV shows that I've done, we never had a, a live round on set. Uh, Tristanio said, workplace disputes be set and the protection of rest uh, from it start in early, sorry, in early October in the hours before the shooting. Before the shooting, several camera crews walked off the set and amid discord over working conditioning conditions, including safety procedures. A new crew was hired that morning, but filming was slow because there was slow down to one camera. Souza told the detectives at twenty four uh Guti uh, read Sorry, at 24, Reed had a little experience working as a, a manure. She told the de- de- she told detectives that on the morning of the shooting, she checked the dummy oh, bullets. Um, the bullets that appear were real, save for a s- small hole inside of the the. uh, casing that identifies themselves as in probable to ensure none were hot according 
to search warrant may uh I can't say it. Sorry. A F F I D V A T. This is an odd name. <laughs> oh God. Sorry. Okay. When crew broke out for lunch, the guns were used for filming were locked in a safe in a large white truck where props were kept. Uh, Reed said the ammunition, however, was left unsecured on a cart. There was an additional ammo inside the prop truck. Um, after lunch, the film's prop master, Sarah Zachary, removed the guns from the safe and handed them to Reed. Reed told the investigators, according to the search warrant released last Friday, um, Reed set three guns on the car outside of the church, and assistant director Dave Pauls took one from the cart and handed it to Baldwin. The document re was released Wednesday, said the armor sometimes handed the gun to Baldwin and sometimes to the halls. Reed declined the comment, excuse me, um, <laughs> contacted by the Associated Press on Wednesday. She wrote in her last text message, uh, on Monday saying that she was trying to find a lawyer. Hmm. However, Hall, Halls obtained the weapon the weapon before it, getting it back to Ball when he failed to fully check it. I mean, I don't know. I feel like it, it was a horrible thing that happened on set, but I feel like you should always prop properly thorough check all weapons. Like, even if you checked it once, check it twice. Or check it even three times. That's what I think. Okay. Normally he told detectives that he would examine the barrel for obstructions and that have a reed open the hatch and spin the drum where the bullets will go where the bullets will go. Confirming none of the rounds is live. This time he reported that he could only remember Oh, this is a long case. Okay. Oh 
Oh wait, no. Okay, this is the last. Okay. Uh, seeing these of the rounds that he didn't remember of the um, or, were A R M O R E R had spun the drum. Um, nevertheless, he yelled at Cold Gun to and and that dedicate the it was safe to use. Um, he advised he should have checked them all, but didn't. Well, duh. That's kind of his fault, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It is unclear whether Baldwin deliberately pulled the trigger or if the gun went off um, in, in a vertently, I-M-A-D-V-E-R-T-E-N-T-L-Y. Um, in the in the commotion after the shooting, Hals found a weapon a black uh revolver R E V O L V E R manufactured by an Italian company that specialized in the nineteenth century rep uh reproductions on a church pew. He um he. He brought it to read and told her to open it. Um, he could see what was inside. There was at least four dummy bullet ca um, casings with a small hole inside of in, sorry in in the side. He told detectives <laughs> there were an um, there was one empty um, casing that had no hole. Um, Matona Bryan reported from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Johnson reported from Seattle. Associated Press writer Cedar Antanzio in Santa Fe, New Mexico, New Mexico uh, contributed. The shooting occurred on Bonanza Creek Ranch, a sprawling Hey, I got that one right. <laughs> Yay me. Um, the property that beliefs as itself were the Old West comes alive. More than 130 movies have been filmed there, dating back to Jimmy Stewart's The Man from Laramie, L-A-R-A-M-I-E. In 1955, other features included 310 to Yum Yuma, Cowboys and Aliens, and the miniseries Lonesome Dove that the Tom Hanks Western 
sorry, the Tom Hanks Western News of the World and the Comeback Trail, starring Robert De Niro, Tommy Lee Jones, and Morgan Freeman were filmed there in the recent years. Um, Sousa, Sousa is spelled S-O-U-C-A, in case anyone was wondering. Um, heard what it was like, um, a lip, heard that sounded like a lip followed by a loud pop when he later told investigators. So, that is it. I finally did it. <laughs> it takes a lot for me to, like, really read these, because I'm not really, I don't know, the great person, best reader, but I try. And that's all everyone can ask for, right? So, what do you think of those two stories? Um, let me know down in the comments below. And I will get back to you soon. Hopefully, I finish this up today. I guarantee it, because I'm not going outside in this weather. It's rainy and ugly out, and yeah. It's just an ugly day outside, so I hardly doubt that I'll be going outside unless if it's to see a friend, but oh yeah, because um, she, she's just a couple doors down from me, so it's not that bad, um, but other than that, probably just going to finish this up, and I started cleaning up um, the holiday visitors. So, I started doing that yesterday. <laughs> Yay me! I'm ahead of the game. A little bit. Just, just, just a tad, right? Right. Alright guys, that is it for now. I hope you guys liked this video. And then I have a couple more true crime stories coming up. So stay tuned for that. I do like some of them because, like, if I watch it on like court tv live and whatever and i think if it's an interesting case then i'll definitely do a lip and chat about it or about what i can find on that case per se but on that note bye for now have a great friday everyone Peace.